Hey guys, TSM Smithliner here, Power of Evil. This is gonna be my Aussie guide, sponsored by Logitech G. Let's get right into it. Aussie, as a midland champion, is has a really high skill ceiling. Since release, has always been impactful and has always been in the meta. So it's a good champion to have in your champion pool, and it's a good champion to have, you know, ready for when he gets a little bit stronger again, or even if he's not that strong, you can normally still pull him out in certain situations. Aussie's biggest strength is that he has a lot of control in the lane. He does pretty much everything. Good team fighting. The laning phase is normally pretty strong and competitive. One of the key factors is that at level six, you have to protect potential to shuffle the enemy opponent. Kind of having that ability to scare and bluff the enemy mid laner, you can get a lot of control. And the biggest weakness is currently his early game that is not that strong anymore. And you normally need the synergy between jungle and mid. The reason why Aussie is so strong is because you can call for your jungler, you know, set up the ganks easily. But normally you can't really kill the enemy mid laner alone. You always need like a second person, whoever that is. The two Asia rune pages that are the most common ones are Comet, Mana Flow Band, Transcendence, and Scorch for the main page. You know, when you really want to win lane and you really want to like snowball the early game and you're in, like in a pretty hard matchup. On the second page, you normally always take Domination and you go for Taste of Blood and Ravenous Hunter. And on the bottom runes, you go for attack speed and depending on if you play against um, you know, AD champion or AP champion, you go armor or AP resistance. It's pretty simple. It's a really strong page for the early game. As I said, you're maximizing the Scorch and the Comet you know, for punishing the enemy laner in the early laning phase. But there's another option, which is lethal tempo. So you go for the precision tree, you go for lethal tempo, presence of mind, and then you can choose Alacrity or Tenacity, depending on if they have a lot of CC or not. Normally I go Coup de Grace, but if you're playing against like Sign or something, you can go for the Cutdown. And the same thing here again, Taste of Blood and Revenous Hunter. Same situation, just the difference is that the Lethal Tempo is weaker in the laning phase, way weaker. But obviously with the Lethal Tempo, that gives you like an insane attack speed. So later on in the game, like late game wise, you have so much attack speed on the soldiers that you cut through their tanks really, really fast. In my experience, or like in the higher, higher level of competition, the Lethal Tempo is too greedy and it's too hard to take. You know, in solo queue, sometimes I take it and I think it's, it's a viable option. There's actually one more off rune build that I'm gonna show you guys. It's actually a mid laner in Korea used that one. He is actually running Conqueror. Similar, everything else is the same. He goes Conqueror instead though. What Conqueror does is that it gives you two stacks if you hit someone with a soldier. Obviously two stacks with each spell that you hit him or hit someone. You get more and more AP and you kind of try to use that rune page against melee champions, like let's say against like a Silas or something, where you want to get that early game power, but still have like more mid game than Comet. Because Comet is really for the early game laning phase and Conqueror is like, I would say like a step further, it's like a little bit more late game, but I would say more mid game. And then Lethal Tempo is the late game rune. Comet I would use against other mages, let's say Orianna, Victor, you know, that are gonna fight back. I would go for Conqueror against melee assassins. Are not the strongest in the early game, but they're sc they're getting scary towards the mid game. So like I would play that against the Zed, against the Silas, maybe even the Cassidy. And I would go for the lethal tempo against really, really weak mid lane champions. They don't really want to punish you. And you can kind of just get away with that. So let's say a Galio mid lane. Another one would be TF who just ults the way out of your lane. So get an idea on champions that wanna fight you back, where you're gonna struggle. Comet, champions that like uh, more scaling, you can go for the Conqueror. Champions that don't really do anything, lethal tempo. The Aussie skill order is pretty simple. Level one, you can only take a Rise, which is summoning the soldiers. And then from that point on, you max Conquering Sands, that's the Q spell. Secondary, you're gonna max the W up, which is just getting more soldiers and having the cooldown reduced. And as last one, you take Shifting Sands, which is your jump ability. And obviously, whenever you can, take your ultimate. On Azir, the starting items are gonna be two options. First one is gonna be the Doran's Ring and the Double Heal Pot. Uh, the other option is the Corrupting Potion. Corrupting Potion is a little bit weaker because obviously you invest in more heal potions and on your first bag you can get them refreshed. So they're like more for a defensive laning phase. And the Doran's Ring is more calculated. You get some ability power, you get, ability, like you get mana back when you last it correctly. And it's a little more, you know, aggressive. But you need to be aware that you have less heal potions. You have like less, you know, margin of errors. I would actually not say you should choose either one in specific matchups, but more how confident you are in the champion. If you felt like you played enough games, try to learn the Doran's Ring start. Maybe if you just started playing your champion, go with the Corrupting Potion so you can make a little bit of errors in doing the laning phase. 
for item choices or mythic especially i feel like there's only two options 80 percent of the time you should go for the leandris it gives you everything that you need right the other option is ludens ludens is a little bit worse in my opinion really good against assassins you don't get to auto tank that much so having that burst instead of that consistent damage can be better in certain situations after the mythic item is completed, it's pretty much really open and there's a lot of Aussie players that build different stuff and really comes down to each individual game. I'm just gonna suggest some items and then you guys need to just make it depending on your game. Zonias is one option as second item. Zonias against like Assassins like Talon or Zed. Um, another one would be the Banshees against long range champions like Seraph. Have so much range that Aussie can't really get to them and getting that extra mage resistance is gonna be really helpful. If you wanna go for the more aggressive version, you can choose the Nash's Tooth, which is a lot of attack speed, a lot of AP, and a lot of, you know, just straight up damage onto the front line. Or you can go for the Void Staff to get some magic penetration when you see their tank is already really, really strong. As last option, the Rabadons is obviously always good. It's really efficient and buffed in one of the latest patches. So that one is a really, really strong item too. From all these five items, you just really make it depending on what do they have. You check the items. They have a lot of mage resistance, go for the Void Staff. You need some, you know, survivability, go for the Zonias or the Banshees. Or if you want to just do damage and destroy them all, go for the Rabadons. Azia has a really unique passive and it's actually really nice because not only does he, you know, protect you, but if he last hits the minions, you actually get their goal too, which is a really nice feature. So you could even put down a turret, recall, and the turret is gonna do the job for you. The way you use the Aussie passive, my opinion is you shouldn't be uh, saving it. You know, just use it when you feel like it. You know, use it when you want to just safely take a wave. Use it when you want to base before and you just want to take some extra gold and you want to, you know, let the turret last it for you. Another option is using it in a team fight. It's bad if you don't use it. Talking about the Aussie Q spell, Conquering Sands, it's less about the actual damage that you deal with it, but more about how do you position this, like the soldiers that you have on the field correctly. It's really about should you actually do damage with it or should you just put them in a good positioning so if they walk in, you can actually hit them with the, with the soldiers because in the middle late game, the soldiers will deal way more damage than your actual Q spell. The RZW spell is pretty much an advanced, like you extend your range on your other attacks. I would say that's like one of the biggest you know, skills that you can have is putting your soldiers correctly on the field and knowing when to put them where. So when you put down a soldier, you're having like a circle, like there will be a circle around the soldier to show you in which range the soldier can actually out attack. So you kind of need to learn that and have that in your fucking feeling. When is the range correctly for the soldiers to hit? So you can like, let's say the enemy is walking towards you, put down the soldier on max range, you give him a hit, but you start running away. The enemy keeps running at you. You will just do the out take movement back and forth and your, your soldier will keep hitting him. And if he runs back, you run front and you keep hitting with the soldier too, right? But if you do it wrong and let's say you put it in a bad spot or let's say you use it and you walk towards them for no reason and you don't really use that range, you normally lose these traits. You normally should never spam your soldiers out because obviously they cost mana. So rarely I use two or three at the same time. I normally try to keep it at one. You have one to last it. The enemy is getting too close. I cue him with the Conquering Sand spell, hit him once or twice and I wait again. Go a little back, put down a soldier to extend my range again so I'm not in danger and I wait for my Q spell again to reposition him and hit him a little bit again. Rinse and repeat. To improve on knowing the soldier circle range and knowing the range the soldier is actually activated from you because if you walk too far away from the soldier, he will get deactivated. Honestly, there's no tip besides playing the champion more and more. I'm going to be using the Logitech G Pro X keyboard and the 703 mouse. Um, it's really important in team fights that it's smooth, lag free. It's really coming down to these micro seconds. It really is important to have the right gear. And honestly, I really enjoy pressing the buttons as well on the keyboard. So that's like a plus point for me as well. The main combo, the rinse and repeat combo is pretty much just, you put down your soldier anywhere, you would last hit the minions. And whenever you feel like you're in range, or you can poke him, you queue him, you auto attack him, and then you can decide moving backwards or keep hitting him depending on how he reacts. If he reacts aggressively and he walks up to you, you can kite back. If he runs away, you can hit him once or one or two more times. So it's really easy, you, like, you have the soldier on the ground because you're last hitting minions, and then you queue auto attack, and then you just move around, see what he does. It's, it's really simple, it's, a, it's the easiest combo. Um, that's your go-to combo in the laning phase. There's other stuff you can do too. Another one is just escapes. The easiest is you just put the soldier over a wall and you E towards it. That's um, 
the fastest just escape combo, but you can do long range escapes too, right? So you don't only need to have the EQ combo to shuffle, but you can use it to escape over walls. Um, I'm gonna show you guys one over here, and you wanna get to your turret, you can put down the soldier over the wall here, and you can EQ, and you're already at your turret. You can do really, really extended jumps. How you do it is, you E towards your soldier that is on the ground, and right before you land on him, you Q him further away. Oh, this one is actually now bad. <laughs> I'll just do it again. You E, and then you Q last second. And we extend the range. It's really simple, but you need to be fast. Let's say there's like a dragon fight, you know, there's a dragon contest. Um, you open the wall, and you want to get that shuffle on both of the carries. That's the AP, that's the mid laner, and that's the AD carry. To get a combo on them, you're over the wall, you're like baiting, they're about to come into, into the river. You would WEQ, and then flash ultimate, and you have both of them. If they're more close here, let's say they would be more close like this time now, you don't even need to use your flash, you can just WEQ and you would shuffle them both into your teammates around the dragon area and hopefully win the team fight. The last two combos I would suggest you guys is let's say the enemy opponent is losing and he's standing under his turret and he's not really giving you the WQ range. So what you do in th these situations is you put on your soldier, you would just last at the minions and then you would E and then now you have the extended Q range and you would Q him afterwards. That's how you would trade. And the last combo I'm gonna show you guys is, it's a really special combo. Um, it's really hard to execute. So let's say this is Herald or, Dra or Baron, you can do this around the dragon area too. So what we do is, let's say, you know, you're over the wall, you queued here, there's like, a, like they are like contesting the Herald, and now you E, Q ult, and you shuffle them over, and now you're in the same spot. Like, how to do it? It's really fast, so I'm gonna try to like, you know, you have the soldier, close to them, in range, so you don't need to EQ. So you would just E towards the soldier, right before you hit it, you Q back to where you need to be, and then you ult. The reason why this is really hard is because if you hit someone with your Q spell, you obviously, you, you're not allowed to pass through them, so you will get stopped. So that's why the soldier needs to be like next to them. So in this situation, I'm putting him next to him, I'm gonna Q, EQ, and I ult it. And as you could see, it's a really hard combo. I only managed to get one this time, and I didn't get both. You can use that not only here, you can try to like be really fancy. Let's say they're sieging up onto the turret, and you want to look really cool. It's just a really hard combo to do, so I wouldn't suggest it, but you know, it can look really cool. I'm going to wait until the soldier disappears here, and now we're going to do this. And it's really hard combo to do. You, you need to probably be a little behind them with the soldier, and then you do this, and then you do this, and you can maybe kidnap one of them while being in the same spot, but it's, it's really tricky. I think the Azure Shuffle is actually the third, it's mechanics. The third is having the eye for the engage, and the third is knowing when to go in. Which I guess you can somewhat say is the eye for the engage, but as well, you need to know the right timing. These three things are really important. Reason why is obviously the mechanics. If you can't execute the jump correctly with the shuffle, you will never be able to do it. So I would suggest practice set in the practice tool. I think that's the easiest to do. Uh, having the eye for it in the sense of is finding yourself the angles for it. So being over and over a wall, having a pink ward maybe, you know, being in like a like a bush and looking like, oh, is this is this like should I even go for this or not? Don't we just win front to back? Like, do I really need to do this big play to win the game? Or can I just play really safe, hit the, hit the front line, hit the tanks? My tanks are more tanky. We do more damage as well. There's nothing to worry about. I don't need to do something crazy. So that's why I think these three things are really important to have in the shuffle. Obviously, you can still go for the shuffle in the end of a team fight. You know, let's say you're winning already and now you're kind of just picking up the kills in the end because they're running away. Go for it. But really be aware that not every game you need to go for that. Well, so you can obviously, as the last option, you can use the Azir wall to, you know, save your teammates. Kind of use it like an Anivia wall. You should normally not do that in most situations because it does a lot of damage and you kind of want to use it to you know push people away and then actually just put down a wall but obviously you know it's always a situation for everything so if your team is running away you need to block down block down the road go for the ultimate run
Well, honestly, if you go for the shuffle, and that's how you win the team fight, and you need to shuffle their carries, it's really on how fast do you do, do the combo and how good is your teammate. So when you do the combo, and let's say you do them quickly, you do it correctly, right? And you get both, let's say you get both their carries. You get the AD carry and the Milena. Your team follows up correctly, they will blow them up. Now, even though you're probably in, in all of their, you know, their team, it's gonna be a 5v3 and you should be good to go. And you should still survive and maybe, worst case, you will die, but you will have won the fight, maybe killed three, four people for that one kill trade. Like, don't get chucked by it, you know, by failing it once or twice. It's like, not really a fail if you get certain stuff out of them, right? So I would actually say a double flash can actually win you the game more than if you would have killed one or two there. That's pretty much everything you need to know about the RZ Ultimate. Be confident, practice it, and show your friends at home what you can do with it. How to play the laning phase is really simple. You want to just put down the soldiers, use the higher range that you have, that extended range, and poke down the enemy. You normally don't win by just 100 to 0 trading him, like having this all-in fight, but by slowly chipping down his health bar, slowly winning the laning phase that way. It's a really easy and simple way, as I said before. W, Q, rinse and repeat. Don't overspend your mana though, be aware. Try to actually play a little bit around your runes too, right? If you go for the combat rune, the stronger laning phase rune, you wanna use the combat on cooldown. So just wait for your comment to come back up, then go for the Q spell. Really, really easy thing to do. Azi, I would say right now is not the strongest solo queue champion, so I wouldn't say he has like insane matchups. But the better you are on Azi, the more even all the matchups are. I think Azi is kind of like a stabilizer. He's really, really not getting countered by many champions, and he is he's just okay into most matchups. Kind of like an Arena. I wouldn't say Arena is just OP, but he's really, really stable in most matchups. Yeah, you generally just try to like you know your goal as an Azi when you play a mid lane is that you just want to win the early game by chipping down his health bar, getting a CS lead, and and then when you shine is in team fights and the mid to late game when you do that damage and you position correctly. I definitely think that Azir has mana pool issues. That's why actually I take the tier. I just buy the tier. I don't always upgrade it. I just buy the tier for 400 gold on like the first or second base and I just keep it in my inventory. Uh, not every Azir player does that. Um, other Azir players try to stay away from that because obviously it's 400 gold which you mainly only invest into mana. But I honestly think after playing so many Azir games, it's definitely worth it and you can make use of it in the laning phase and in the mid to late game when you just keep using the mana that you got from the tier. I think the hardest ones actually matchups that outrange you. Zeref was one of the old school counters because he actually has higher range than your WQ. So what he will do is just poke you from a million range and disable you in a sense before you can team fight. AB Kotma, back then there was like the Varus mid lane. Now it's like Corky Zeref, I would say. High, high range against Azi is really good. You even see some people play the Victor because the laser of the Victor has even range and sometimes even slightly more if you, play, if you really use it on the max range. Um, I think High range is really important against Aussie. Thanks for watching guys. I really hope you enjoyed my Aussie guide. Um, special shout out to Logitech G for sponsoring this video. Check out my socials below. I hope you guys are gonna climb some ELO, get the juicy Aussie LP going. And there is not an easy way out for the team Liquid Duo lane. The scoop comes oh. across, can address the buy some time. Yeah, Maybe kept alive here for the shielding. Santori can't do much. Power of Evil does a lot. Huge ulti into the team Liquid lines. Even. Team Even. Despite the fact that EG have the dragon advantage, TSM got oh. Harold. And Power of Evil is going in for Jazook.